So, I got a question for you. How many of you guys have ever tried something, whether it be food or an activity or something that you typically wouldn't do or wouldn't eat, but because somebody that you are either friends with or maybe it's like a family member, somebody you look up to, or maybe it's someone on TikTok and they're doing this crazy thing, and so you decide that you also want to try this, okay? Don't lie to me. You all do it. I'll give you an example. I am absolutely, and there's not many things that I'm afraid of. That's not true. I am terrified of heights. Okay? I don't know what you said, but what I think you said I won't repeat. Oh, food. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of food. But anyways, I hate heights. Okay? And then how many of you went to camp? Camp Harvest. Doesn't matter. How many of you have been there? Okay. So at Camp Harvest, they have a zip line. Okay? I don't want to do it. Okay? Hate it. Okay? I would rather just not. Okay? So I had someone come up to me and was like, you're going to zip line with me, right? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> like, I don't want to. But I decided that because I love him, and he asked me to, I was doing it with him, right? Because I decided that my fear of heights was not more important or it wasn't stronger than the love that I have for my students, right? So if you guys know, there are things you will ask me to do, and I will tell you no. But I'm not that afraid of it where I wouldn't do it, right? Another example. So on our way to camp, it was Emily, Marissa, Seth, Norm, and myself, we're all driving up to camp, you know, and we get to the store before, and Norm gets a Red Bull out. So he goes to the store and he gets a Red Bull, and I'm like, I've never had Red Bull. I'm going to try it. So then I take one out, and I, you know, get a bunch of different colors. Marissa and I, like, stocked up for the week. We were, like, ready, and I tried it because I'm thinking, like, I don't know about you, but Norm is always obnoxiously loud at camp, and I feel like he's always super hyped. So I was like, I need some energy at camp, which all of you know, that's like false. I think neither of us need Red Bull to have energy. But anyways, I tried it and I love Red Bull. It's something I love. Would I have tried it without Norm having it first? Probably not. Chad drinks monsters all the time. And I'm like, you're such a loser, Chad. Who drinks monsters, right? But Chad isn't that person for me, right? But if Norm was like, hey, try Red Bull, I did. So anyways, that... So true. <laughs> well, that's kind of like believing the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and I can jump off a building and fly. It's false. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, you guys. So how many of you know somebody? And let's kind of make it a little bit serious. How many of you know somebody who whenever they're with certain people, they change their personality? Okay, when I'm with one person, I act a certain way, and then when I'm with somebody else, I kind of switch it up, right? We all know some of those people. I don't know about you, but I've heard them called, um, some people say that they act like a chameleon, right? Because what does a chameleon do? They change to adapt to their environment, right? I've also heard some people say something like, oh, you know, they act like a caterpillar, because what does a caterpillar do? It hides and then it morphs into something different, right? They change. So... Today, so last week we talked about Paul, right? About how Paul writes these letters and about how he talked about how we are God's handiwork, right? It says we are his masterpiece in some versions. So today we're going to look again at some more of Paul's writings and we're going to go to the book of Romans, okay? And I'm going to read in Romans 12, and it's not super long, so hang in there with me. I'm going to start right at verse 1, and it says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all of the things he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in evaluation 
of yourself, measuring yourself in faith by what God has given us. Give, or just as your bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so is it with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts, doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, then be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. God has given you leadership abilities. Take responsibility serious. And if you have the gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And I kind of love that Anthony started talking to you guys a little bit about worship and what that means. Because it says in the scripture, right, that we need to worship him by making ourselves a living sacrifice. Now, how many of you kind of know about the Old Testament and that they would do sacrifices back in the Old Testament, right? So they would take some type of livestock, typically like a goat, a sheep, a lamb, and it had to be like perfect, right? They said it was spotless. It was like this pure lamb. It was the best of the best, and they would sacrifice it for their sins, okay? Now, why in the world would they do that? Well, because this is a reminder, right, of the price of our sin, right? That's what it took in order to be forgiven. That's the price of sin, right? It says in the Bible, for the wages of sin is what? Death, right? So you guys, Norm talked about this Sunday. And when we say that, we always think, oh my gosh, if I sin, I'm going to die. Not necessarily, but when we say the wages of sin is death, it could mean death in other areas. It could mean death of our joy, death of our peace. Death of our happiness, right? These are all things that happen. So back in the day, we had to make sacrifices. So when we kind of hear this, he says, I want to make you a living sacrifice. It's kind of scary. It's like, uh, no thanks, <laughs> right? I'm good. But that's not necessarily what this means, okay? What that means is we already know that Jesus came. He was our sacrifice, right? He paid it all. He put all of our sin all of our shame on his back and on his shoulders, and he died so that never again would we have to make a sacrifice like that. So we know that. So we're already in grace because of what God chose to do. So what God is saying in this moment is that he wants us to be a living sacrifice, meaning he wants, first of all, not just us to do good things for him, but he wants to have us. We want, he wants us to give ourselves fully over to him. And again, I know that Kind of sounds crazy and a little scary. But he wants us to put our thoughts aside, our wants aside, our desires aside in order to be aligned with his, right? Because that's how we bring glory to him, okay? Then it goes on to start talking about how we are the body of Christ. And we hear this all the time, and again, that kind of sounds weird, but when you really start to think of it, what it's trying to say is, I want you guys to think of your actual bodies. We were designed with all of these different things, these different parts of our body, and each part was designed with a special purpose and function, okay? I have never seen someone who can speak from their eyes. I've seen people who can, like, blink, and I can, like, try to, like, you know, but I'm not getting anywhere with you with that, Okay? Um, how many of you have ever tried to like brush your teeth or maybe eat or write with your feet? It's super unnatural. Now, it's, it could possibly be done, but that's not the way or the reason or the purpose that they were created, right? And in order for us to get to that place, in order for us to get to that place where we can do that, it takes a lot, a lot of practice and it will forever be awkward. You see, God has created us the same way. We are all parts of the same body. Okay, some of us have different jobs and functions in the body of Christ. That's what he's trying to say here. He's trying to explain to you guys that we all have different things. Like when um, Anthony was just praying and he said, you know, like for me to come up and teach you, thank you for giving her that gift. I don't even know if it's really a gift. <laughs> we're going to claim it as one and we're going to move forward. But you guys, we all have that special gift, ability, talent, traits. We all have something. And some of you are thinking, yeah, but I don't know what mine is took me forever to get here. And even then I fought kicking and screaming because I did not want to. <laughs> I hate teaching, speaking, anything in front of people, it terrifies me. Public speaking, being in front of people terrifies me. So who knew that that's what I would be called to do? 
So some of you might say, oh, I love to sing. Well, good. Then do it for God. Oh, I like to paint. I like to draw. I like to... You could still use those gifts to glorify God's kingdom. And some of you are saying, I'm just a really, um, really good listener. Well, good, because that's really important as well. You see, God has created each and every one of us differently. Just like those of you who may try to go home this night and try to brush your teeth with your toes. <laughs> your parents are going to walk in and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you're going to be like, uh, Nicole told me to try. <laughs> so, so I might get some text messages. I might get some text messages from your parents later like, what are you teaching in church? But what I want you guys to know is that we all play a really important role right? We all have a special role, and it's just as important as the next, okay? Um, now, the problem starts when we look at other people's talents and abilities, and we start to want what they have instead, right? I tell you what, if I could be like Jared and sing on stage. I, first of all, singing and worshiping is my favorite thing to do. I feel like I was created to worship. I just don't do it well. <laughs> At least what you guys think as well. God probably is like, get it, girl. But you guys are like, stop singing out loud. Okay? I love to worship, right? I would love to be that on stage. I would love to know how to play an instrument, and I would love to play the drums, and, but it's just not me and that's okay, right? And the problem comes when we try to change our gifts and our talents and our abilities to be like someone else. So I want to go back to verse 2 really quick, right? And it said, don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Another version says, do not conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. You're probably thinking, what does that mean? So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an example of what this looks like, okay? So I brought in, and these are like super old toys that I am surprised Carter still had, but I stole them from him in a big bin of toys. Okay, so what kind of happens is we were designed and created, right? And God puts other people in our lives on purpose. Sorry, apparently Play-Doh is really hard to get out, and it's getting all up in my nails. But anyway, so God puts people in our lives, right? And we are told that our job is to go into the world and we're supposed to be a witness for him. We're supposed to, you know, be a light. We're supposed to do all of that. But what happens is sometimes, okay, we end up spending time with people or doing things or watching too much TikTok. There's a couple of you in here that I'm talking to at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're still scrolling on TikTok? Mm-hmm. You don't have to make eye contact with me. It's okay. I see you. <laughs> I see you. Anyways, we spend so much time doing certain things that we begin to see what the world is doing and what they're saying that we should be doing, and we begin to, and I want to show you this, and I'm only using this because it has the, a good mold. Okay, it begins to leave a mold on us. So when it says do not be um, conformed to the ways of the world, it's saying like we should not become like the world. Can you guys see that it leaves, you can see like the dents from the horn of whatever this kind of dinosaur is. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Carter. Okay, so it begins to leave its print on us. Okay. You guys, this is kind of what the world, this is what happens when we spend too much time into things of this world, right? I'm watching all these TikTok videos, and I'm seeing the things these girls, and I don't have a TikTok, so that's false, I don't. But I see all these girls doing these dances or these moves, or I watch these guys and, and the things that they're saying and doing, and I begin to think that I too should behave that way, right? Because these people clearly are famous. These people clearly have all these followers, and so they're liked and they get all this attention. So we begin, to, we begin to think that we need to behave that way as well, right? So this is what it's talking about. It's saying, like, don't be conformed to the ways of this world. Our job as Christians is to be a light 
Our job is to be the salt, if you know what that means. You know, it talks about how, you know, nothing, salt gives flavor, right? That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the salt of the world. We're not supposed to change and be like the world, okay? Now, a lot of us do this. Some of you even in here, I can watch you guys be exactly this each week. I see you come in one week and you are singing and you're worshiping and you're raising your hands. And then the next week you have a different friend show up and you are not that same person, and I'm not trying to call you out, but I'm trying to be honest with you. Why? Why is it one day okay that you really love and worship the Lord that created you, but the next day somebody else shows up and you're a little bit embarrassed and a little ashamed so you don't? And I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm really glad that the day that my Savior chose to hang on a cross, he wasn't worried about what other people thought of him. He wasn't worried about how stupid he looked hanging there almost naked, beaten to the point of being unrecognizable. And here we are, afraid to raise our hands in glory and honor to what he did for us. And I'm not trying to peer pressure you or push you into worship, but I'm trying to wake you up and say, hey, here we are, made in his image, created to be like him. He designed us with special gifts and talents and abilities. And then someone comes walking in the room. Some friend comes walking in the room. And I decide that I'm going to kind of like scrunch to the back and like put my hood up and pretend I'm not here and I'm not going to worship and I'm not going to interact. And I get it. You know, you don't want people to think that you're weird or that you're not cool or whatever. But could you imagine what it would have been like if that's how Jesus was the day he had to die? The day that they came to take him away. When Peter decides to pull out his sword and chop off an ear, and Jesus was like, let's go, like, run. Well, they're picking up his ear, and there's this mess. Let's get out of here. If he knew that he would be beaten to the point where he wasn't even, he didn't look human anymore. I don't think, you guys, when we read the Bible, I don't think we fully grasp what he did for us. It was not just a quick death. It was not just anything little. I mean, this is huge. And thank God that when he chose to do that, it wasn't, a moment of embarrassment or fear. Or maybe he was up there and he saw his mom sitting there crying on the ground and he was like, I can't do this to her. There has to be another way. I, you, know, you know what, Lord? Or, you know, because at this point, he chose to do this for us. God didn't say you have to. This was, this was the gap between us and between him. And God said, you know what? If this is the only way, but it's, it's Jesus' choice if he chose to do it. And he said, you know what? I love these people that much that I'll do it for them. And as he's sitting there, he could have any minute looked up to the Father and said, you know what? No. <laughs> nope. I've been spit on. I've been mocked. I've been beaten. My skin hangs off of my body. I am weak. I am tired. I am starving. And at any minute, he could have said, no, I'm good. And he could have thought of this exact moment and said, oh, you know, those kids in the church, and, and they just don't get it. They don't understand. But you know what? He knew that nobody was too far gone. Nobody was unreachable. He knew, he knew that you would all be here in this exact moment at this exact time. And he knew that every person he was dying for, the cost of their sin if he did not. And so... We come in and we see these things all around us. We see the things of this world and, and we kind of get drawn into it because I'm going to be honest with you, sin is way more fun. Sin is way more fun. Right? Because that's what Satan does. He's not going to tempt you with the fact of, hey, if you sin, you can come down here and join me. It's so hot down here. No, he's going to come up to you and he's going to tempt you with those little things. He's going to show you those little things that somebody else does. Hey, if you don't eat food for six weeks straight and you just drink water, you could lose weight and you could look like this girl. Right? Or hey, your parents can't afford those beats. But if you go on aisle six, there's no cameras. And you can cut it open. And I, don't, there's, I don't know what aisle six is. But you guys, you can cut it open and you can put them in your bag and you can get away with it. You know, there's all these different things that sin does. Sin feels good. Right? Hey, but only if you, you just smoke, just take two hits. That's all it takes. You're going to feel so much better. Are you? 
And so here we are and we read the story, do not conform to the ways of this world. And you guys live in a world where you don't have a choice but to conform. Because if you don't, you get labeled, you get bullied, you get pushed into this little corner of what you are, even though it's not true. And some of you are like, well, I'm homeschooled, or I go to Christian school. You guys, you will grow up eventually, and the world will be right there waiting for you. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world. And I'm sorry, but sometimes we're in there, and I see us worshiping, and my heart breaks a little bit, because it's like, we're missing it. We're missing an opportunity. Every moment we are alive, every breath that you take is a gift, and it's been given to you by our God. And with every breath that is given to us, we should be worshiping him. And I'm not saying you have to walk down the school and sing like Jesus loves me through the halls and someone's talking to you and you're like, I'm praising Jesus, hold on. I'm not saying that. But everything you do should be because of him. When we become Christians, it is a choice that we have made. It's a choice. Jesus had a choice to die for you and he chose to do it. You know, you guys all have the choice to live that same life, that crazy life. When it talks in the beginning about a living sacrifice, you get to choose to wake up every day and say, God, not my will, but yours. Show me the broken people. Show me the people that feel unloved. Show me where people are hurting. And you guys, maybe you're part of those people. Maybe you're feeling, okay, but what about me? Because I feel hurt. I feel broken. God sees you too. And do not think that the people sitting in this room are also called to be that for you. Do not conform to the ways of this world. You don't have to believe the lies that are told to you. You don't have to. I go to work every day and I work with people who don't believe like me. And they try to tell me things. And they try to push things on me. They tell me I can't wear shirts that say something about my faith. They tell me I can't do certain things. Right? Because that's the world that we live in. Because apparently being a Christian is offensive. When Jesus stepped out, you guys, he did not step on a journey that was perfect. He was perfect. But the journey he took was hard. It was hard and it was long and he did it only for you. There was no glory in that from him. He had to live it out. Could you imagine? But he did it for you. And I know it's tough. Because I also was young, and I know what it feels like to get pulled into peer pressure, and I know what it feels like to make stupid choices. I would love to sit here to you today and say my testimony is that I was perfect and I didn't make mistakes. I was perfect and I didn't fall into peer pressure. I was perfect and I didn't let people around me change who God created me to be. But I'd be lying to you, and I promise I'll never lie to you. I screwed up time and time and time again. And I made stupid choices, and I hung out with people I knew were bad influences, and I allowed myself to be conformed. Okay? There was even times where I remember sitting watching TV and I was flipping through the station and I remember like, how could someone who doesn't think like me possibly not make it to heaven just because of like one little thing that they do? That's a sin. And I started to kind of be taught and like my, my, my thoughts began to change into, but why? But why? Why God? And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter why. What matters is what the Bible says. And you guys, those little sins become big sins. And think about it, even a little sin back in the day required a sacrifice. Right? A little sin back in the day required something to die, to cover that sin. And today we don't have to worry about that. Because Jesus did. All we have to do is admit, confess, and give it to him. And you guys, I really want to encourage you because if you guys don't step up, if you guys don't take this as an actual call on your life, What happens to our world? What happens? Who's going to be the next generation to rise up and say enough? Who's going to decide every single day that they refuse to conform? But they're going to be transformed because you guys, when you allow God to transform you, your thoughts change. Okay, your desires change. And I know so many of you And I know your hearts, and I know that God has such a call on so many of you. I know that. Do you know that? So you guys, I want to close, because I know Norm wants to play a game with you guys before small group, but I want to close with you guys today. And whenever we 
have a message or whatever we talk to you guys, I always want to give you an opportunity to make yourself right. Because you guys, like I said, every day, every breath that we take is a gift. Every breath that we take is a gift. Okay? Tomorrow's never promised. Ten minutes is never promised. We don't know. So guys, when we're sitting in this room and, and we have these conversations, first of all, I want you to remember that you were his choice. When Jesus died on that cross, I like, you know how like they say, you're like, your whole life flashed before your eyes. I like to imagine that your whole life, not his, your whole life, flashed before his eyes. And as he laid up there or hung up there, barely breathing, could only imagine the pain, he knew that you would be born, that you would be created, and that he would call you to be great. So you guys, I was going to ask you guys just to close your head for a second. I just want to spend a moment in prayer with you. You guys, I can't promise you that life will be easy when you are a Christian, but I can promise you that you'll have peace because for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's what's promised to you. The gift of God is eternal life. So as we sit here for, for a moment, guys, and heads bowed, eyes closed, God, if you guys, if any of you are in here today and you feel like maybe the weight of the world just has crushed you and you find yourself looking anywhere to find your true identity, you're looking anywhere to find a place that you can fit in and a place that you belong, if you are in this room and you don't feel like God is controlling your life and that you have been conformed and transformed to renewal of your mind and that your heart is not one with God and your thoughts and your, your actions are not one, I want to give you a moment today to make that happen. So I just want you to place your hand over your heart. And this has nothing to do with me and you. This has to do with you and God. This is a moment that you get to decide with your Savior, the man who hung on a cross for you. This is a chance for you to say, you know what? I want to be more like you. I want to have a heart like you. I want to follow you. And I don't want to be pushed into this little bubble of what I'm supposed to be and conform into what the world says I have to be. And I want you guys to say this prayer with me today. Oh, Father, Thank you that you died on the cross for me. That you took my sin and shame so that I can be free. I believe that you rose again. I ask you to come into my heart, renew my mind, make me like you. Give me strength and courage to step into the world and be your light. I give you my life. Father, I just thank you for these students. I thank you that you have created them as parts of your body. Each of them created with such a gift and ability that will be used for your kingdom. And I thank you, Lord, for the choice that they make daily to wake up and follow you. Satan, you cannot have these students. They do not belong to you. You have no power over them, no control over any of them. Lord, I just pray you bless these students that they feel loved by you, they feel protected by you, they feel guided by you. Be with these students as they go, Lord. Thank you for the choices that they make each day, the choice that they just made in this room to let you in, to let you be in control. Father, you are good all the time. And although the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life, and we receive that life today. We thank you, Lord, that you are so good to us.